Okay, back with Power Byte. This is part three on leadership. Let's see, reviewing again. Um, rule number one was changed. I changed it, so that's official. Uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And by doing so, you will be an example. Uh, a promise is a promise, remember. Uh, God's promise was not to Isaac, it was to Abraham. And Isaac and Ishmael were both his promise. All right. Kindness goes a very, very long way, just being nice. Matter of fact, kindness, you have to be kind. That's another step. It's in there twice. Being kind. Be kind. Kindness goes a long ways. Relationships are important. It's important that you don't just have a relationship with um, people that are close to you, but also those around you, okay? Um, oh, my goodness. I'm thinking of Sir Richard Branson. He, he took a picture. And someone took a picture of him with one of his staff. They had fallen asleep on the sofa or something like that, and he went up behind them. They took a picture. It was a great picture, a great moment. Richard Branson's a good leader, okay? So be kind. Is the uh, godly leaders have compassion, okay? Um, let's see. Time is important because there's time for everything. Uh, the parable of the sower. Remember those four points in the parable of the sower? If not, go back and check the last video. Check your fruit. Make sure you have love and joy and peace and long-suffering and kindness and goodness, faithfulness in your workplace, in your leadership, okay? Not just your workplace, but your home. Take it on. Children of Israel ignored Goliath for 40 days, and David came in, took, took on the giant. Excuse me. Now, be spiritual, okay? So, in Galatians 6, 1, this is uh, the ESV. Brothers, if any one of you... If anyone is caught in any trans transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. And this is something that uh, I've seen in the church, especially in our circles. If someone is caught in sin and adultery or something like that, most of the time we just throw them out the door. We don't keep them in our church. So what that tells me is when we throw them out, we're not spiritual. Scripture says to do the... No, you restore them. You've got to restore these people, okay? In gentleness. All right, so forgiveness is required love walk you know forgiveness is required by jesus for answered prayer you, you've got to forgive people and move on okay uh there's actually a scripture about the evil eye someone did give it to me it's in proverbs but i want to read what because i got an evil eye from a leader one time and I was going through a very difficult time. And at that time, I did not need his judgment. I needed his help. Uh, I was emotionally dead. I was burned out. See, your eye is the, this is in Luke eleven thirty four. your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Be careful the way you look at people. Body language, I mean, says so much. People that need your help and you giving them a dirty look does not help. Take care of your people, okay? Take care of people and they will take care of you. Timothy, 1 Timothy 5.18, the labor is worthy of his hire. Give people a reason to stay. And then accountability. Take accountability for wrongs of those who follow. You know, you will win every time when you do this one. Now, I'm not saying that you should always take accountability for a person's wrong. 
but this is the the example in scripture I have for this one is Jesus. He took accountability for every sin I did. He never once sinned. But he said, Keith, I'll take that from you. I'll take that. I'll take it on. Recently, I <laughs> the evil eye okay, that I got, um, there was more to the story. And I found out, you know, I just kind of discovered recently it was something that I hadn't gotten over with completely. And I just kind of, honestly, I was kind of pondering on it. when, And I was just like, man, you know, just thinking about it. I'm like, I haven't gotten over that. And it wasn't like I was, you know, hurt over it or anything, but I was just like, you know, this happened after that, that happened. I didn't get over the evil eye. And I'm like, Jesus, this person is accountable to you, you know. This is your responsibility. And um, as I was doing that, he popped up and he said, you give that to me. He goes, I take on that responsibility. I'm the head of the church. You know, Jesus, and I'm like, you know what, Jesus, this is yours. I'll never bring this up to this person. Now, if they bring it up, that's a different story. But, you, you know, I'll go to my grave with this. Or, you know, they'll go to their grave and never know. So, take accountability for other people's actions, okay? And I promise you, when you do that, you win every time. That builds so much trust. That builds your relationship. I mean, I've heard people say, well, I'm not going to take accountability for what they did. Well, why not? It's not that big of a deal, to be honest with you. I mean, it's here one day and it's gone the next. You do it that, you do it that quick. It's here one day and it's gone the next. The problem's gone. And in the process, you've built trust in someone that, you know, it's going to be loyal to you. They're going to be kind when they see how your heart is and you're, you know, you take accountability. Now, do you always take accountability? No. Um, yeah, you do have to, con you know, confront situations, of course, but, and you may have to confront that situation to, hey, listen, this was incorrect, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, me as a leader, I took it on. And, um, I, you know, it's basically, it's intercession. It's what you're doing. I did that one time for a guy, should have been fired because he came in late. And then we have a rule, you know, you don't, sh you show up late, uh, over an hour late, you know, two times, I think it was two times a month or something that, you know, that's termination. That's grounds for instant termination. For some reason he got the time zones wrong. And, uh, and I was like, no, and he was mad at himself. He was, dude, he was, he was upset. And I didn't, I didn't take it personal. I'm like, look, I got my job to do. You got your job to do. And I'm like, he was upset, you know, and I'm, and I told my supervisor, you know, I interceded for him and I said, you look, this is a great guy. You know, he made a mistake. He understands it. And we got him out from it, you know, and he moved on, got promoted, et cetera. And he was a great person, great person to be friends with, you know, but you can do these principles. Okay. There is nothing wrong with, um, with not doing these in any situation of life, of your life, okay? So let me go over these again real quick. I got a minute. Rule number one is no longer rule number one. Uh, do unto others as you want them to do to you, okay? Rule number two, a promise is a promise. If you can't keep the promise, repent. Just ask for forgiveness. Confront it. Don't, don't ignore something and expect it to go away because when you do that, and this goes on to the other one um, with uh, King David. When you ignore something and you don't confront it, what happens is you give grounds for speculation. And you don't want that as a leader. You don't want people to speculate what you're thinking and what's in your heart and what you're reasoning. You need to tell them why. You, you're doing away with something because what happens is that speculation grows. They end up talking, other people end, and you get a bad rap. No, you need to confront and let them know what is happening and why it's happening because 
not only are you stopping the speculation, but you're giving them an opportunity to grow in leadership also. Okay? So, a promise is a promise. You know, again, take it on like King David did, or David did. Uh, kindness goes a very long way. Relationships are important. Again, be kind. Godly leaders have compassion. Don't be afraid to show your emotions. There's a time for everything. Parable of the sower. You're always going to have people who are against you. Check your fruit. Again, take it on. King David, confront. Don't be, of confront, don't be afraid of confrontation. And then be spiritual. You know, you which are spiritual, lift up on one that's fallen. Forgiveness is required for love walk. The evil eye, body language, how you talk, how you treat others, how you look at them. Take care of your people. And then accountability. Okay? So, understand this. It's leadership. I'm not trying to get anybody out of position. I want to help you in your positions because uh, I don't want your position. <laughs> <laughs> Bless your hearts. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you hope you guys are encouraged. So be encouraged and be blessed.